Hey guys, how's it going? It's again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos. Today I'm going to be continuing the videos on iOS plugins. I show you how to create a bridge between Unity and iOS on the previous video. We look at how we could do and use the DL imports how we could expose some of the methods within Unity so we could call them on iOS. So what I'm gonna be doing today, we're gonna to be doing a little bit different, which is going to be calling Unity code from within iOS. So we're gonna be adding a callback and also a confirmation dialog. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right guys, so let me show you some of the things that I added since the last video. And in the last video, I show you how we could add an alert and we were able to pass in a title and also a message. I walk you through how to create a, and add a DL import so that we could bind to the method that was under the actual plugin for iOS. And then we also were able to see how the alert looked like in the device. So what I wanna show you this time is I wanted to also add a confirmation and not only a confirmation, but I also wanted to add a callback. So I spent some time looking at this and how I could implement it and found out that Unity provides a met basically a method that allows us to tell the engine what method and what game object we're trying to call a method on and also what parameters. So I'm gonna show you some of that. So the first thing that I added for this implementation, which is the confirmation, is I wanted to add a, basically a constant that you know would tell the user if some, well, actually the coder, if somebody was trying to call any of these methods in a different platform, I was going to always show this message. And if you notice, I have an if and an else, an if Unity, you know, Unity iOS, then I do all, all these. If it's not Unity iOS, so if it's the Apple TV or PlayStation or any other platform, and somebody tries to call this method, they're going to get a no supported message but I also wanted to get the method name just in case, you know, I, I wanted to specifically tell them where that was happening. So I'm using reflection, as you can see on the very top system, that reflection. And that's what this is, method base, get current method. It'll basically give us the name of the method that is getting called. And then I'm appending the not supported method, which message, which is the one that is on the very top. And then I'm also doing the one for the show alert confirmation. I get the method name and then I say that it's not supported. So this is what's happening on the on the else. I can in fact collapse it so that we don't see that part. So the part that I needed for this video is I wanted to do also a confirmation, meaning that I wanted to ask the user if they wanted to do something. So in this case, I'm basically saying OK or cancel. So in this one, it's just a message and somebody can just click on OK and then that will dismiss the, basically the, the dialogue. In this one, they're gonna have two options. One is gonna be okay and cancel, and then also the callback. And the callback is gonna be the method that we're gonna be calling in once we press the okay button. So this is just similar to what I did here. I have a DL import with the, which is an attribute with the internal the as the string. And then I have a private a static stern void with basically the same message, except it has confirmation after the fact. And then I also have a title, a message. And then the only difference in here is that I have, that I have a callback. So this didn't change at all. The other method that I have in here is the show alert confirmation. I follow the same pattern as the show alert. And then it just takes one more parameter. And then I'm basically calling the one with the underscore, which is the one that the C code is going to be exposing. So that's basically what I did here. The The other thing that I wanted to show you is the iOS plugin callbacks. This one for now is fairly simple. All I have is a method. Basically, it's gonna be, it's a class, which is called iOS plugin callbacks, and then it's gonna have multiple methods. Right now, I just have one. And the way that this works is if I specify that the method that I wanna call from within iOS is called callback, it's going to execute this action, which happens to actually execute another alert. So just keep that in mind because we're gonna be calling into it and I'll show you where that is happening. So the other thing that I wanna show you is the actual plugin and some of the things that I changed there. And I also want to, I'm gonna put the iOS plugin on the right side 
and then we're going to basically hide this so we can see what's happening in here. It's going to make this one a little smaller. So the the first implementation, which is the alert view, didn't change at all. I, I haven't changed anything in there. The, the other thing that I actually needed to change and add was the alert confirmation view. So I follow the same naming convention here, except I added a new parameter, which is called add callback, and it takes in a basically an in a string with a pointer and then call back. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to specify, I wanted this to be dynamic and specify which callback I wanted to call at a specific time. So what's gonna happen is in Unity, I'm gonna say, okay, I want to, I want to show an alert and I want to call, basically make this callback as soon as the user presses the, the okay button. So if you notice in this implementation, instead of having one, action now i have two different actions so the first action is just like this one like the one that we had before except that this actually implements an action so if you notice this is just an empty action it doesn't do anything when you press the ok button but in this one it does it actually calls unity and i had a little bit of a hard time trying to find out how to incorporate unity send message and it turns out that all i needed to do was to add a new import which is pound uh, actually number symbol import and then unity app controller as soon as you do that you're going to have access to the unity send message and these are basically three different parameters and the implementation requires that you pass in a char so this is going to be an ios plugin callbacks so the first option is going to be the the actual game object that you want to call on the callback so remember the user is pressing OK, so when they press OK, I want to make a call back to Unity, so that's why this is the callback. We're going from the native code back into Unity, and this is the object that we're going to be make, basically sending a message to. And instead of that object, there's going to be a meta, and that's what this is, it's going to be the callback. And I converted it to UTF-8 stream because that's basically what the signature requires. And then this is optional, and this is if you wanted to send any parameters. If the callback would take, you know, a string or or a different data type, then I would have to put it in here. So that's what this is. And then I also have a cancel action. It's basically a copy of this one, except it's called cancel. And then I make the handler null because I didn't really need to specify an action. In fact, in this one, I could actually make it null and it wouldn't change anything because we're not executing a handler. So that's basically the implementation here, and then I add the two actions. One is the OK action, and then the other one is the cancel action. So this is basically adding the two buttons, and then I'm doing exactly what I, what I was doing before, which is to call the Unity get GL view controller, and then present the view controller, which basically shows the alert. Then down here on the C code, I added a new, basically a new meta, which maps to, let me go ahead and resize this, which maps to our DL import method here that we have an extern on. So the underscore show alert confirmation matches this, just like the show alert matches this. So that's the other requirement. Then the other things that I needed in here is I needed to call the meta that I'm implementing in here. So it's still static. You can see the plus symbol there. So I'm doing iOS plugin. I'm calling my new meta, which is the alert confirmation view. And then I'm passing in the title of that dialog. And then, well, I shouldn't say dialog because iOS calls it alert. So this is the title of the alert. And then the message of the alert. And then the callback that I'm basically going to be using to call back into Unity. So that's the extra parameter that I have there. So for the most part, that's basically all the changes that I did there. Let me show you the implementation on the bindings. So you notice that I had another parameter on the show alert confirmation. So you can see here, I have a new button. It's called show alert confirmation button. Just like this one, I had to basically add an on-click event with, I use an uh, at listener, and then I, I basically specify the name of the method that I'm gonna be calling. So on the callback, I wanted to I wanted to also do something different. And if you're noticing here, this is gonna happen when I click, when I actually select that button. I'm gonna call into iOS, and I'm gonna call the show alert confirmation. I'm gonna pass in the title, the message, and then the method that I wanna call back. So 
This right now, it's no type, it's just a string. And the way that this is gonna work is, remember what I did in the, what I did on the plugin. I'm basically telling it, I'm gonna look for anything that is called iOS plugin callbacks. And if we go into Unity, we go ahead and open it up, which I don't have it open. You're gonna notice that I'm gonna have a game object that is called, is actually called iOS plugin callbacks. And then inside it's gonna have a method called the callback. And that's what I'm gonna show you here in a second. And the way that it works is I ended up creating a game object, which is called iOS plugin. If we go back into it, you're gonna see that we have that. We also have the, I also have a, a class associated with it, which is the one that I was just showing you. It's called iOS plugin callbacks. And then, which is this one, and then there's a method called callback. And the cool thing about this is I could use the iOS plugin to just show an alert, telling telling the user that the callback was executed. So if you notice, if we go back here, I'm saying, okay, look for anything called iOS plugin callbacks, which I have a class and I also have an object, so that should work. And then I'm also telling it to look for this specific method, which is called callback. And this a specific part is basically happening on the UI binding. So if I were to basically call this hello, I would need to have a method in the binding, in the iOS plugin callbacks that was called hello. So because this one is called callback, that's basically what I have to specify here as the callback. And if we do comma, you can see that that's actually the callback parameter. So let me show you, I already built this and I already went through this exercise. I wanna show you how it works in the simulator. So I'm just gonna go ahead and find the code here. Let me undo that. And I'm gonna go into my desktop. I already built it, it's called show alert demo. And I'm gonna open up the Xcode project. And I should give it just a few seconds and you can see that all the stuff that I just show you, it's there on the plugin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit play to build the application. And it should be launching here in just a second. Let me go ahead and it's gonna open the simulator and open the application. There we go. And for some reason I can't move the simulator. Oh, there we go. Now it's responsive. So if I if I select the basic alert, you can see that we're getting a basic alert. If I select the basic alert with confirmation, we should now be seeing two buttons for the confirmation, which is basically the the second one that we coded in the plugin. And then if I hit OK, that should be making a callback back to Unity and then also going back to the native iOS and then doing the first the first alert. So if I hit OK, then that should be this means. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.